dear students welcome to part 2b of module 2 of the course ect 201 solid state devices myself assistant professor jasmine sebastian from the department of electronics and communication engineering asset in this class we will discuss about the diffusion of charge carriers einstein relation and in very brief about poisson equation in module 1 we learned about the generation of excess charge carriers in a semiconductor when these charge carriers are created non uniformly in a semiconductor material the concentration of electrons and holes vary with position this concentration variation with position is called gradient so this concentration gradient of electrons and holes causes a motion of carriers charge carriers from regions of higher concentration to regions of lower concentration this type of motion due to the gradient in carrier concentration is called diffusion so we know that when there is a movement of charge carriers there is current conduction the two basic processes that contribute to current conduction in a semiconductor are diffusion due to carrier gradient which we discussed just now and drift of charge carriers due to an electric field so in a semiconductor the charge carriers diffuse from regions of higher concentration to regions of lower concentration and this happens by random thermal motion and scattering from the lattice and from impurities in the lattice so let us consider this figure let us assume that a pulse of electrons are injected at a point x equal to 0 and at time t equal to 0 so the concentration of electrons is maximum at t equal to 0 and at x equal to 0 with passage of time the pulse of electrons will spread out as shown in the figure that is at time t2 it has spread out so initially the electrons were concentrated at x equal to 0 and as time passes the electrons start spreading out that is it starts diffusing to regions of lower concentration and this diffusion occurs until the concentration of electrons that is n of x is constant throughout the distance now let us try to understand the rate at which electrons diffuse by considering a one dimensional problem consider the figure and an arbitrary distribution of electrons n of x uh, we said that electrons diffuse by random thermal motion and by collision with the lattice and impurities so let l bar be the small distance between collisions so the entire distance x is divided into segments of width l bar and the concentration of electrons at the center of each segment is calculated the graded area is zoomed and shown in this figure that is segment n1 and se uh, segment 1 and segment 2 the concentration of electrons at the center of each segment is calculated and is given by n1 and n2 the width of the segment is the small incremental distance between collisions that is l bar so now we are planning to calculate the rate at which electrons diffuse so let us consider the segment 1 the electrons in segment 1 to the left of x row have equal chances of moving to its left or to its right in a mean free time t bar so this the same is true of electrons in segment 2 also so uh, in a mean free time t bar one half of the electrons in segment 1 will move into segment 2 so let us consider the net number of electrons passing the point x row from left to right in one mean free time so that would be the difference between the electrons passing from segment 1 into segment 2 
and from segment 2 into segment 1 that is given by half into n1 l bar into a minus half into n2 l bar into a n1 is the concentration of electrons per centimeter cube and l bar into a gives you the a volume of each segment so half of the electrons in that particular volume in segment 1 moves to segment 2 and half of the electrons in segment 2 move to segment 1. So the net number of electrons passing x0 would be the difference between those two. That is 1 by 2 n1 l bar into a minus 1 by 2 n2 l bar into a. The rate of electron flow in the positive x direction per unit area that is the electron flux density is given by phi n of x0 is equal to l bar by 2 t bar into n1 by n1 minus n2. So we know that l bar is a very small differential length. So n1 minus n2 can be written as n1 minus n2 is equal to n of x minus n of x plus delta x by delta x into L bar where x is considered as the center of segment 1, x plus delta x is considered as the center of segment 2 and delta x is equal to the mean free distance that is L bar. So in the limit of small delta x we can rewrite the equation for electron flux elect rate of electron flow in the positive x direction as phi n of x is equal to we are substituting equation 419 in equation 418 so l bar squared by 2 t bar into limit delta x tending to 0 n of x minus n of x plus delta x the whole divided by delta x that is equal to minus l bar squared by 2 t bar into this can be written as dn of x by dx. The term L bar squared by 2 t bar is the electron diffusion coefficient denoted by dn. And we know that the unit for the electron diffusion coefficient is centimeter squared per second. So we can see a minus sign in this equation. The minus sign indicates that the net motion of electrons due to diff diffusion is in the direction of decreasing electron concentration. So that, that is why there is a minus sign in the equation for rate of electron flow in the positive x direction per unit area. So how can we rewrite the equation for phi n of x in terms of the diffusion coefficient? We know that L bar squared by 2 T bar is the diffusion coefficient given by denoted by dn. So we can write phi n of x is equal to minus dn into dn of x by dx. Similarly, for holes we can rewrite the same equation as phi p of x is equal to minus dp where dp is the hole diffusion coefficient. dn is the electron diffusion coefficient and dp is the whole diffusion coefficient. So phi p of x is equal to minus dp into dp of x by dx. So now let us calculate the diffusion current crossing a unit area that is current density. So what is the current density? It is the flux density multiplied by charge of the carrier. So the current density due to diffusion of electrons j which is denoted by j n diffusion is equal to the flux density multiplied by charge of the carrier. So minus q into minus dn into dn of x by dx that becomes plus q into dn dn of x by dx. Similarly the diffusion current due to holes diffusion of holes is equal to the charge of holes is positive so plus q into the flux that is minus dp into dp of x by dx that is minus q dp into dp of x by dx. So this gives the 
diffusion current due to electrons and diffusion current due to holes. So even though electrons and holes move together in a carrier gradient from equation 422 A and B we can see that the resulting diffusion currents due to electrons and holes are in opposite directions. We can say the change in sign and that is because of the opposite charge of electrons and holes. Now let us try to understand Einstein's relation. So Einstein's relation relates the diffusion coefficient to mobility of charge carriers and it is very important in semiconductor device design and analysis. So in the previous slide we derived the equation for diffusion current uh, due to diffusion of electrons and holes. In addition to carrier concentration gradient if an electric field is also present then the current density will have drift current in addition to diffusion current. So the equation for total current density which includes both drift and diffusion components can be written as J n of x which is the current density due to electrons is equal to Q into mu n into n of x into epsilon x which is the drift current plus the diffusion current Q dn into dn of x by d of x. Similarly, the total current density due to holes jp of x is equal to the drift component q into mu p into p of x into epsilon x minus q into dp into dp of x by dx. That is the total current density is the sum of contribution due to drift and diffusion and the total current density is the sum of contribution due to electrons and holes. So that we can write as Jx is equal to Jn of x plus Jp of x. The total current density due to electrons have the drift component as well as diffusion component. Same for holes and the total current density is the sum of contributions due to electrons and holes. So J of x is equal to Jn of x plus Jp of x. Now consider this figure. Let us assume an electric field to be in the positive x direction and let us assume the carrier distribution n of x and p of x decreases with increasing x. So let us try to understand in which direction will the drift and diffusion currents be. So we know that diffusion is always from region of higher concentration to region of lower concentration. So let us consider holes first. We know that the carrier gradient is in the positive x direction. So diffusion of holes 5p diffusion will be in the positive x direction. And we know that holes always move in the direction of electric field. So the drift of holes will also be in the positive x direction. So the current density due to diffusion of holes and drift of holes both will be in the positive x direction. Now let us consider electrons. The diffusion of electrons will be from left to right that is in the positive x direction and the drift of electrons due to this electric field will be opposite to the direction of electric field that is from right to left. Phi n of drift is opposite to the direction of phi n diffusion and we know that current is in op opposite to the movement of direction of electrons. So the current density due to diffusion of electrons will be from right to left and current density due to drift of electrons will be from left to right. So from this we can see that the drift and diffusion components of current are additive for holes when the electric field in the direction of decreasing hole concentration. But when you consider electrons in the same condition that is even if the electric field is in the direction of decreasing electron concentration the direction of diffusion 
and drift current due to electrons is opposite. That is, they are not additive. So, we, we saw equation 423. Equation 423 was the uh, equation for current density due to electrons and holes. So, from equation 423, we can see that the drift current is directly proportional to carrier concentration. So, we know that minority carriers are lesser in concentration. So, the contribution of minority carriers towards drift current is very less. But diffusion current is proportional to the gradient of concentration. So, let us consider an n-type material to understand this in more detail. In an n-type material, the minority carriers are holes and the minority hole concentration may be many orders of magnitude lesser than the electron concentration. Therefore, the drift current due to holes in an n-type material might be negligible. But the gradient, hole concentration gradient dP of x by d of x can be significant even, an, even in an n-type material. So, as a result, the minority carrier current through diffusion can sometimes be as large as the majority carrier current. So, we saw that when electric field is applied in the positive x direction, the electrons drift in a direction opposite to the electric field. So, we can expect the potential energy E of x for electrons to increase in the direction of electric field. So, the electrostatic potential which is denoted by V of x varies in a direction, varies in the opposite direction since it is defined in terms of positive charges. Therefore, V of x is equal to the potential energy E of x divided by minus q. The potential energy increases in the direction of the field and the electrostatic potential varies in the opposite direction as it is defined in terms of positive charges. We know that, we know from the definition of electric field that epsilon x is equal to minus dV of x by d of x. So, let us write epsilon x is equal to minus dV of x by d of x that is minus d by dx of we know v of x is equal to e by minus q where e is the potential energy. So, let us consider a reference point ei which is the intrinsic Fermi level. So, dv of x by d of x becomes d by dx of ei by minus q that is equal to 1 by q into d ei by dx. So, we know that at equilibrium there is no net current flow in a semiconductor. Equation 423 in the previous slides, 423b was the equation for whole current due to diffusion and drift. So, that can be equated to 0 at equilibrium. When you equate that to 0, you will get epsilon x is equal to dp by mu p into 1 by px into dp of x by dx. We know the whole concentration in equilibrium is given by P0 is equal to Ni into E raised to Ei minus Ef by Kt. Substituting this for Px in the equation 427, we get epsilon x is equal to dP by nu P into 1 by Kt into d Ei by dx minus d Ef by dx. The equilibrium Fermi level that is E of F, E F does not vary with x and we know that from equation 426 we can write d E i of x is equal to q into epsilon x. So, substituting the fact that the Fermi level does not vary, equilibrium Fermi level does not vary with x and substituting the equation for d E i of x by d of x as q into epsilon x 
we can rewrite equation for 28 as d by mu is equal to kt by q where d is the diffusion coefficient mu is the mobility k is the Boltzmann constant t is the temperature in Kelvin and q is the charge of an electron this equation or this relationship is called Einstein's relation so as we said in the beginning we can see that the Einstein's relation relates the diffusion coefficient to mobility mu so this relation or the Einstein's relation which we derived just now allows us to calculate either the diffusion coefficient d or mobility mu if we know the other one at room temperature or at a temperature of 300 Kelvin we know, since k and q are constant d by mu is approximately equal to 0 0.026 volt for most semiconductors now let us learn about Poisson's equation in very brief we will be applying Poisson's equation when we learn more about uh, p-n junctions and diodes. Poisson's equation relates the charge contained within the semiconductor crystal with the electric field generated by this excess charge. So the Poisson's equation can be written as dE by dx is equal to rho by epsilon where in the above equation E is the strength of the electric field rho is the charge density in the semiconductor crystal and epsilon is the materials permittivity the charge density rho can be written as q into p minus n plus nd plus minus na minus where q is the fundamental unit of charge p and n are the concentration of electrons and holes respectively and nd plus and na minus are the concentration of ionized donor and acceptor atoms. So you can substitute this value of rho in the above equation which is the Poisson's equation and Poisson's equation is widely used when we learn the p injections. With that we have come to an end of part 2b of module 2. Thank you.